And joining me now is the counselor to President Trump, Kellyanne Conway. Uh, Ms. Conway, welcome to the White House North Lawn, which will Hi, become Chuck. a familiar place for you, I think, yes. uh, for the next few years. Let me begin um, with this question. The presidency is about choices. So I'm curious why President Trump chose yesterday to send out his press secretary to essentially litigate a provable falsehood when it comes to a small and petty thing like inaugural crowd size. I guess my question to you is, why do that? Chuck, the president did many things yesterday and the day before that are very meaningful to America. He signed executive orders to stop Obamacare and all of its problems. Uh, many people have lost their, millions of people have lost their insurance, their doctors, their plans. So that stops right now. He's going to replace it with something much more free market and patient centric in nature. And on this matter of crowd size, I mean, for me, I think the most quantifiable points of interest for Americans should be what just happened a few months ago that brought him here, the 31 of 50 states he won, the 2,600 counties, the 200 counties that went for President Obama that now went to President Trump, and the fact that uh, 29, 30 million women voted for Donald Trump for president. They should be respected. Somebody should cover their voices as well. I, I'm about things that are quantifiable and important. I don't think that, I don't think ultimately presidents are judged by crowd sizes at their inauguration. I think they're judged by their accomplishments. Uh, and, and we know that President Obama and his accomplishments, so there's a lot of unfinished business there. And on this matter of crowd size, I think it is, I think it is a symbol for the unfair and incomplete treatment that this president often receives. I'm very heartened to see Nielsen just came out with the ratings, 31 million people watching the inauguration. President Obama had 20.5 million watching his second inauguration four short years ago. So we know people are also watching the inauguration on different screens and in different modes. Mm -hmm. And that there was, I mean, for me, there was a prediction of a downpour of rain. I think that deterred many people from coming. But no question, there were hundreds of thousands of people out on the mall. All right, Kelly, uh, and, and, uh, you know, uh, let me many stop you here enthused. because you make a very reasonable and rational uh, case for why crowd sizes don't matter. Then explain, you did not answer the question. Why did the president send out his press secretary, who's not just the spokesperson for Donald Trump, he could be the, he is also serves as the spokesperson for all of America at times. He speaks for all of the country at times. Why put him out there the, for the very first time in front of that podium to utter a provable falsehood? It's a small thing, but the first time he confronts the public, it's a falsehood? Chuck, I mean, if we're going to keep referring to our press secretary in those types of terms, I think that we're going to have to rethink our relationship here. I want to have a great open relationship with our press, but look what happened the day before, talking about falsehoods. We allowed the press spray to come, the press to come into the Oval Office and witness President Trump signing executive orders. And uh, of course, you know, the Senate had just confirmed General Mattis and General Kelly to their two posts. And we allow the press in. And what happens almost immediately? A falsehood is told about removing the bust of Martin Luther King Jr. from right. the Oval Office. That, no, that's just flat out false. And the and pool writer. And it was writer, corrected immediately. But why, Chuck, but, why but was it said? No, Chuck, I mean, why was it said in the first place? Because everybody know. is so presumptively climb, negative. Climb the head of that no, reporter. that it's okay. No, but excuse me. Oh, no, 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 no. That reporter was writing. To the, uh, on behalf of the press pool, that that I falsehood that. got spread three thousand times but it does before not it excuse, was corrected. Excuse and me, it's it still does out not there. excuse. And you did not answer the question. I did you, answer no, your you question. No, you did not. You did yes, not answer did. the question of why the president asked the White House press secretary to come out in front of the podium for the first time and utter a falsehood. Why did he do that? It undermines the credibility of the entire. White House press office no, on day don't one. Be so, don't be so overly dramatic about it, Chuck. What it, it, you're saying it's a falsehood, and they're giving Sean Spicer, our press secretary, gave alternative facts to that. But the point remains Wait a minute. Alternative that facts? There's... Alternative facts, four of the five facts he uttered. The hey, one Chuck, thing he why, got hey, right Chuck. was Zeke Miller. Four of the five facts he uttered were just not true. Look, alternative facts are not facts. They're falsehoods. 
Chuck, do you think it's a fact or not that millions of people have lost their, their plans, their health insurance, and their doctors under President Obama? Do you think it's a fact that everything we heard from these women yesterday happened on the watch of Barack Obama? He was president for eight years. Donald Trump's been here for about eight hours. Do you think it's a fact that millions of women, 16.1 million women, as I stand here before you today, are in poverty along with their kids? Do you think it's a fact that millions don't have health care? Do you think it's a fact that we spent billions of dollars on education in the last eight years only to have millions of kids still stuck in schools that fail them every single day. These are the facts that I want the press corps to cover. I, and these are the, this is why I'm here at the White House I understand to this. change what I don't awful understand numbers is, like that. That is not what yesterday was about. So you yes, have not answered the question. You did not answer the it's question. It's what this presidency the, is going to be about. You, you sent the press secretary out there to utter a falsehood on the smallest, pettiest thing. I don't think anybody can prove that. Look, I actually don't think that. It. Maybe this is me as a pollster, Chuck, and you know data well. I don't think you can prove those numbers one way or the other. There's, there's no way to really quantify crowds. We all know that. You can laugh at me all you want, but I'm, I'm very glad. I'm not laughing. I'm just Chuck, befuddled. I'm, well, but you are, and I think it's actually symbolic of the way we're treated by the press. The way that you just laughed at me is actually symbolic of the way, very representative of the way we're treated by the press. I'll just ignore it. I'm bigger than that. I'm a kind and gracious person, but let me tell you something else. I'm really glad that NBC News and Chuck Todd all of a sudden are so thrilled to cover crowd control because we were mocked daily for talking about the significance of our historic rallies Listen, during the campaign. I, I, this is Donald not about Trump brought us. in historic crowds to Michigan, to Wisconsin, to Pennsylvania, to Florida, to North Carolina, and on great days we were ignored, and on most days we were mocked. And those crowds did matter because he built a movement of course the they likes mattered. of which people haven't what, seen. What, what I don't understand is why he's litigating this why stand in front of a memorial at the CIA what else and did he say at the CIA though sizes. you don't want to talk about the rest of this what he said at the CIA first of all his very presence at the CIA sent a great message to our men and women our brave men and women in the intelligence community he went to the CIA yesterday he thought he was going to witness the swearing in of his CIA director Mike Pompeo but you know why that didn't happen Chuck because the United States Senate won't confirm Mike Pompeo as CIA director ask Senator Schumer why that, that is going is. to be a question ask, I have excuse for me him. ask him why ask him why Donald Trump as president has nominated 21 of the 21 cabinet positions only to have two grand total of two confirmed while he takes office. So the Democratic Senate wants to hold up Treasury, Commerce, Energy, Education, the list goes on. We should have the respect and deference of having a cabinet seated so this peaceful transition of power occurs properly. But he went to the CIA because lies have been told about his relationship and his respect for the intelligence community. So he went right there. We had over a thousand requests to attend. We can only accommodate can I, three or four hundred. Can I ask you to? Uh, can and I he ask embraced you what the, the lies, intelligence community. Can I ask you to tell me what lies uh, about the intelligence community um, were uttered about? Uh, uh, President Trump's relationship with the intelligence community that he doesn't respect them do you think what do you think what outgoing CIA director said yesterday in a statement using the vocabulary the language he used about our new president of the United States somehow quote improves our relationship with the intelligence community it is irresponsible it is reprehensible and okay. it is totally then unnecessary let me ask you this is this responsible uh, he called it was disgraceful intelligence agencies allowed any information so false and fake out disgrace say that something Nazi Germany would have done and did so disgrace that was a uh, on January 11th was it right uh, to compare the intelligence community with Nazi Germany what's not right Chuck is that the day before you had people releasing a dossier full of junk and lies and fake news and why did they release the dossier because because people knew that Russian hacking was fading from you as an election that had been totally dismissed as having any credibility or nexus towards our election results. Hillary Clinton lost that election fairly and squarely, basically running on the same message as we heard here yesterday in Washington, D.C. and elsewhere. I heard like a repeat. It was this awful sequel, right. as awful as the original. We just litigated all this in the campaign, and they came to Washington and said the same thing. Donald Trump, President Trump, is very concerned about the leaks that have occurred, and he's very concerned that people would, would really denigrate the way the respect that he has for men and women of the intelligence community. Why don't you go back to his statement on Friday, January 6th, after he had an intelligence briefing that he and Vice President Pence won't talk about because it's top secret, and they won't leak about it because you're not supposed to. 
they're protecting our intelligence and they're protecting the security of people like you and me and our children, Chuck, by not by not leaking. But what he said that day on January 6th, put that statement up for your viewers if you want to do us an honest service. He said in the beginning of the statement, I respect the service of our great men and women in the intelligence community. And then the last part of the statement was that he looks forward to directing his own intelligence team within 90 days of becoming the President of the United States to give us a better view of cybersecurity and to put better, better security measures in place. It'd be nice if he had a CIA director. He doesn't today right, I, I wanna, because the Democrats are holding up his CIA director. I want to go back um, to a question that you continue to deflect. Why was it necessary to send out the press secretary on his first day in office to utter a provable falsehood that now calls into question everything the press secretary stay, will say no, from here doesn't. on out? It no, will it for many Americans. No, it doesn't. You want them to hear that. You want them to hear that I'm not answering your questions, which I'm doing. You want them to hear that they can't trust our press secretary. I think that is what a very dangerous then? statement what to me. What was the motive to have this ridiculous litigation of crowd size? And now what you're casting it. And that your job is not to give what your opinion, Chuck. Respectfully, your job is not to call things ridiculous that are said by our press secretary and our president. That's not your job. You're supposed to be a news person. You're not an opinion Can columnist. Can you please answer the question? Why did he do this? You have not answered it. Yeah, it's I'll answer it this way. I'll answer it this way. Think about what you just said to your viewers. That's why we feel compelled to go out and clear the air and put so alternative it's a political facts tactic. out there. It's a political tactic to come up with alternative facts and try to set up the press as your enemy? No, I didn't say that at all. And that's not why I'm here in this building. I'm here because of all the provable, quantifiable facts, because of the devastation and destruction in our schools, with our health care, in our economy, with our small business owners. And yes, certainly uh, with, with terrorism, our infrastructure. This guy's going to do so much in the first week. He's going to talk to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu today about the Middle East, about Iran. He's going to end the week receiving Prime Minister Theresa May from the UK here, his first foreign leader to be received here. They're going to help renegotiate US-UK trade. But you want to talk about things the media doesn't want to cover. You totally missed Brexit and Theresa May. You totally missed Trump's campaign. You want to talk about provable facts. You've missed it all along. America doesn't really I mean, look, you've got a 14 percent approval rating in the media that you've earned. You want to you want to push back on us. And yet you have a 14 percent approval for rating. is an answer to a simple question. You never you never answered why or the motivation of what was necessary about doing that. Yesterday. Tell me why you just referred to us as ridiculous. I Tell me why the, we were lied about I think with the, the MLK debate bus. is ridiculous. And you I did not say anything about ML. You're a deflect. Look. You're deflecting NBC in order covered to that avoid fake. To NBC covered that question. false report. NBC covered that false report, as did 3,000 other articles that are still up online. Chuck, you can't have a press coming into the Oval Office on day one of the administration. We welcome them in to, to, to be open and gracious and to have a great relationship with the press. They came in and the press pooler wrote a false article about the removal of the bust of Martin Luther King the junior days after days after president trump met with martin luther king the third martin luther king jr's son in new york city and had a very constructive open conversation where martin luther king jr's son said we have to unify and help heal the country together and boom any snarky attempt to try to undercut this president in the oval office while he's doing the business of the country you just i mean we can't have this kind of relationship i completely agree but well, I, I i'm <laughs> sitting here trying to answer basic questions and you're trying to attack me with some I'm not attacking you. You, you weird attacked Twitter us as feed, ridiculous. With some Twitter Twitter feed that you guys are obsessed with. Look, I'm going to have to leave it there. You have another interview to go to. I have a rest of the show to go to. Kelly and Conway, I yeah, appreciate you coming Chuck on Schumer to share why we don't ha Ask Chuck Schumer why we don't have cabinet secretaries approved. We nominated 21. They've approved two. I will, among the questions I have for him. Thank you. Hey, NBC News fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and then click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.